Hello, Seidl. Welcome back to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Caitlin. In this video, we're going to be exploring four key differences between first and second language learning, or L1 and L2 learning for short. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a lifelong language learner and teacher. I have a PhD in linguistics with a focus on how the mind and brain learn languages. There is so much to learn about the science behind language learning, and I'm excited to be taking you on this journey with me. Are you ready? Let's get started. If you're watching this video, I'd venture to guess that you've tried your hand at learning a second language at some point in your life, but I'd have a much harder time guessing how proficient you are in that language. However, I can almost guarantee that you learned your first language fairly easily, speak or sign it very well, and have never really given it much thought. So what's the deal? The content of a language is basically the same, whether it's learned as a first or a second language. But aside from some extreme cases, pretty much everyone successfully and relatively effortlessly learns their first language. That's not always the case with second languages. In this video, I'm going to walk you through four key differences between first and second language learning. These are not the only differences but they demonstrate why the process of L1 learning is fairly consistent across learners, whereas variability enters the picture in nearly every facet of L2 learning. And this variability translates to different outcomes. Whether you're a teacher, learner, or simply someone who interacts with speakers with different language experiences, understanding this variability can help you become attuned to the struggles and successes of language learners. Now, before we get started, if you're not familiar with the terms first language or L1 and second language or L2, I'm gonna recommend that you go ahead and pause this video and check out another video that we've done on the top nine terms that you need to know to understand second language acquisition. Here's a quick review. An L1 is any language learned from birth or in the first few years of life. An L2 is a language learned after an L1. So these are generally picked up in later childhood or adulthood. By definition, the first key difference between L1 and L2 learning is what SLA researchers refer to as age of acquisition or AOA. This is simply how old you are when you start learning a language. Age of acquisition has been shown to have a clear and significant impact on language learning outcomes. Specifically, the older you are when you start learning a language, the less proficient you're likely to become in that language. Now, there's a lot of debate and some conflicting evidence about specific age ranges and cutoffs when it comes to these so-called age effects in language learning, but we'll have an entire video dedicated to that topic. But there's a pretty clear consensus that people who begin learning a language in early childhood are very likely to be highly proficient or native-like in their language abilities. And these abilities decrease as age of acquisition increases. That is until around adulthood where age is less important than other factors like language aptitude or motivation. By definition, all L1 learners start out in early childhood within a span of about four years, which helps explain why people become so proficient in first languages. When it comes to an L2, an individual could start learning around age four, or 14, 24, 34, 84. You get the idea. It's a much wider range. And in general, L2 learners who start learning around age six are likely to end up more proficient than learners who start around age 16, who in turn will probably be more proficient than those who start learning at age 60. Now, while perhaps most fundamental to the discussion, age is only one of many highly interrelated factors that account for the high variability of L2 compared to L1 outcomes. The second difference between L1 and L2 learning is variability in learning context. While there may be some differences across cultures and individuals, there's pretty much only one way to learn a first language. L2 learning contexts, on the other hand, vary widely. Many L2 learners do learn in immersive contexts while studying abroad or working in a region where their L2 is spoken. But L2 learners also take language classes, study with language apps and online tutors, watch movies, memorize flashcards. All of these learning contexts and approaches are likely to result in different learning outcomes. For example, learners in immersion settings interact frequently with native speakers, which results in more fluent speech. 
Learners who watch movies or listen to music may have very strong comprehension skills and large vocabularies, but they may find speaking, reading, and writing more challenging. Classroom taught learners may have a pretty strong grasp on grammatical concepts, but they may have a harder time putting those to use in spontaneous conversation. All of these differences between learning contexts have direct implications for the third key difference between L1 and L2 learning, which is the amount of input that learners receive. Input is the target language that a learner is exposed to through reading, listening, and viewing for sign languages. Language learners need lots of rich input from a variety of sources. As we just established, babies aren't learning their languages in a whole lot of different ways. Similarly to L1 learners, learners who live in a place where their L2 is spoken will encounter that language in everyday interactions, going shopping, taking transportation, conversing with locals, even listening to local radio or watching local TV stations. This amounts to a lot more input than, say, students who are taking a Russian class at a university that meets about three times a week. Moreover, the extent to which the students in this Russian class do their homework, review class material, and seek out additional ways to engage with the language is likely to vary widely. So even within the same group, the amount of input can be highly variable among L2 learners. It's important to keep in mind that it's not just the amount of input that's important, but also the quality and diversity of input. For example, at Mango, we have original recordings of multiple native speakers for each language, as well as different context and modalities like reading passages, podcast style recordings, and dialogues. And of course, learners can reread and re-listen to the language over and over again to increase their input. The fourth and final difference between L1 and L2 learning that we'll cover today is something called effective factors. Effective factors are things like anxiety, motivation, inhibition, and self-esteem that might help or hinder language learning. Once again, we can relate this back to age. Young children are generally less inhibited and have less anxiety when it comes to learning their languages. They don't really worry about making mistakes, and they do make plenty of them. Many L2 learners, on the other hand, are older and more self-aware, and so they tend to have more anxiety, especially when it comes to speaking and making mistakes in front of others. However, not all learners have the same levels of anxiety and inhibition. Context can interact with effective factors, too. For example, Mango users have ample opportunities to practice speaking in low-pressure environments, like the privacy of their own homes. This can reduce anxiety and improve learning. And visual indicators of performance and progress in the app can help boost learner motivation. When it comes to motivation, L1 learners share this instinct to connect with their caregivers and community through language, known by linguists and psychologists as integrative motivation. L2 learners may have integrative motivation, but they also have instrumental motivation or language learning for practical purposes. These are things like a job, travel, or even a grade on an exam. Instincts like integrative motivation in L1 learners don't vary a whole lot among individuals, but L2 learners have highly variable amounts of both integrative and instrumental motivation, which, you guessed it, contributes to variabilities in language ability. For example, a learner who's taking a Japanese class solely to fulfill a course requirement has a relatively low stakes instrumental motivation and might also have little desire to interact with native speakers. Another learner in that same class might be enamored by East Asian culture and hoping to teach English in Japan after college and develop friendships with locals. Research suggests that, all else being equal, the latter student will develop stronger language skills in that Japanese class. For recently settled immigrants and refugees, their livelihoods may depend on their L2 skills, which can contribute to very high instrumental and integrative motivation. Well, there you have it four key differences between first and second language learning. There are several other factors that have been shown to influence language learning, like individual differences in cognitive abilities or how similar a learner's L2 is to their L1. We'll get to those in later videos. But the four factors that we discussed today, age of acquisition, learning context, amount of input, and effective factors like anxiety and motivation differ widely across L2 learners but relatively little among L1 learners. After watching this video, I hope you understand why these differences in variability help explain why L1 learning is a relatively effortless and uniform process across learners, 
Whereas L2 learning can happen in many different ways, resulting in a range of language abilities. If you like this video and want to make sure you stay tuned for more videos about the science behind language learning, make sure you subscribe to the Mango Languages channel. Be sure to check out the description of this episode for some free materials on the four key differences between first and second language learning. Thanks for listening. Bine kanam. Bertu blessador.